Welcome back to Get Even. I've just come back from a strange memory in this room of many toys in the asylum. Let's continue on. Let me give you an example. How old are you? 25? Let's imagine tonight you're walking home after work. You see a horse in the middle of the street and you're scared. You start uncontrollably panicking. Your heart is pounding, your, your hands get sweaty, you don't understand what's happening to you. And you're an adult, for Christ's sake, you shouldn't be scared of a horse. Now, now, you've no way of knowing what the root of this phobia is, but my therapy will make everything clear for you in an hour, maybe less. Perhaps when you were two or three years old, your brother snuck into your room one night, wearing a horse mask on his head. Perhaps he just... Yeah stood there staring, watching, breathing, waiting. You woke up and you were terrified. I call it TRT, Toy Regression Therapy. Yeah. Give patients toys or mementos from their childhood and the psychoanalytic magic works miracles. So that's the reason for all the toys. <laughs> TRT, Toy Regression Therapy? Uh, yeah, I'm, like, 99% certain that doesn't work. Ah, toy therapy patient list, so each toy is associated with a different patient. Hmm. What a strange bear. Its chest is a donut. I don't know if you're supposed to play with it, sit on it, or eat it. There's evidence somewhere nearby. Ah. DNA found. Female. 18 to 22 years of age. Okay, and that toy is associated with... Patient... 617? John? Hmm. Many patients in Lithers claim they've seen the Puppet Master. Rumor has it that he's been secretly roaming the asylum for decades, somehow controlling all of this, showing us the paths we have to follow. I myself have never seen him, but I dread the day I finally will. Getting more and more menacing in here, Christ. Tom Elliott. Patient 912. Anxiety. Refuses to give away any personal information other than his name. New text. I done scared you, lol. XD, XD, XD. <laughs> From Freddy. Okay, well, there's no one on the map, so I don't think someone's about to kill me. You 
always seemed real to me, even before I got here. The puppet master. The one in control. Because I sure as hell wasn't in control. I felt like shit for as long as I can remember. Everyone was mean to me in school. I was constantly bullied. But I assumed it would stop once I was an adult. Because I believed adults would be too busy to waste time on hurting the people around them. Well, I was wrong. So I found comfort in pills and drinking. But there was always this presence. Like an enormous hand hovering over me. It wasn't my decision to go there and start shooting those people. I'm surprised it's the only thing missing from those CCTV recordings. The black strings coming out of my hands and feet. And the shadow looming over those poor bastards when I was finally made to pull the trigger. Oh, thanks. Convenient service. One to ten. How much did this new treatment help you to discover your inner self? Inner self? I'm no such thing. Please. I just wanted to serve my country. Oh, don't change the subject. I I'll ask again. On a scale of one to ten... You made them cut my fucking arms off! My fucking... We did it to save your life. That landmine... I will end you, motherfucker! Fuck! I will crush your fucking throat! <laughs> How? Uh, you have no arms. But you seem to be much less concerned about your past mistakes now, so let's call that a nine, shall we? <laughs> Post-operative room. Oh, uh, looks like it's for the amputation. Physician in charge, Dr. William Benway. Our dearest amputees? What the hell? get better. Nothing more. And, and there's one thing I just don't understand. Why do the media still criticize my methods? How dare they? What about my results? Hmm? Not, not one idiot journalist ever asked how many of my patients were cured. Not one. And I know why. It's because my patients got better. All of them. Even those who died. Especially those who died. What? What's your definition of better, Doctor?
You! My savior. I said you wouldn't regret letting me go. This is my art. All my brother's sacrifices to the puppet master. You killed all those people. Why? No, you cannot kill what does not live. They are free. And you will join them soon. Mmm. Your dopamine levels have spiked. Are you enjoying this, Mr. Black? Wasn't expecting them to just come at me and then get shot. I mean, did they really think they would win against a gun? Alarm codes. This one's got blood on it. Uh, well, that's probably gonna... What, probably gonna open the door or something? John, uh, from Scott Hopkins to John Letham. Subject, Ramsey's toy. We tested Ramsey's new prototype, and it's still nowhere close to the next big thing we were all hoping for. Five out of six testers reported symptoms of severe VR sickness, mostly headaches and or nausea. Also, the so-called memory visualizing has some pretty major glitches. Testers reported that their memory worlds were fractured at best, and the whole experience was often described as confusing. I think someone needs to address this with Ramsey directly. We wanted to start selling this thing next year, not in the next fucking decade. The king of the wheelchair tower, Maestro Barry. He's completely lost it. Steer clear of the man, or he says he'll eat your eyes out. The wheelchair tower. Is that the person I saw over here? Yep, looks like a wheelchair tower. Right, well, I have to press a button. Hmm. Should I press the one covered in blood? <laughs> I don't know. Sure. Doesn't seem to be looking. Looks like they're just sleeping. This is Redmond's land. Wondering if there's life after death? Just trespass here and find out yourself. What the fuck? Of course it closes behind me. Ramsey, genius or charlatan? Roger Howard knows the answer. Head of Future Defense Group Science and Tech Department Robert Ramsey is widely recognized as one of the most important innovators in, tech, in the tech world. However, to his detractors, Ramsey is a charlatan frequently accused of stealing concepts from his lesser known peers. We talked to former ADS CEO who claims that one of Ramsey's most successful projects was based on a theft. Is there something at the bottom there? Oh, it says The Agitator. Is that the name of the paper? I guess. They might just outright be dead. I don't even see them breathing. Yep, The Agitator. Big Pharma strikes, strikes back. Will robots ruin our lives? Is the future of warfare doomed? I mean, isn't that a good thing if the future of warfare is doomed? Don't we want warfare to be doomed? Warfare is not a good thing, exactly. Former ADS technician telling the untold story of scandal that led to one of the country's biggest defense contractors to see massive layoffs.
Yeah, I don't even see them on the map. I think they're just dead. Forensic kit? Little evidence markers? Of course. Time to talk about our first lead, Mr. Black. What do you know? The question, Mr. Black, is what do you know? Let's see if you have any memory of this place. Focus on the photo when you're ready. Okay, got a lot of things here. Let's take a look. Severn Police. Detective Hector Chadwick, 1996 criminology graduate, began working for the East Barburn Police in 1997, joined Severn Police Department in 1999, and 2002 promoted to his current position of detective. Oh, no, 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 no. That's the photo. Don't want to look at that just yet. So this detective is relevant somehow. Severn Police, Spittle Police Station Database, um, Officer Assigned, Fair and Chadwick. Okay, so Chadwick plus someone else was assigned to a homicide. Is this the other person? Bart Fair. Yep. So Chadwick and Fair both assigned to a homicide case. 1994 Criminology Graduate, okay. Ooh, it says got a Bravery Award in 2009. What if that's related to the case? Questioning. Jasper Prado's death remains unexplained. Chadwick is certain it was a drug-related crime. I've questioned both Jared Porter and Ethan Hamilton. Chadwick talked to John Linden. John Linden? Wasn't that one of the patients or something? I've seen that name before. Yeah, uh, Chadwick talked to John Linden and Albert Hall, but it doesn't seem we're making any progress. More names popped up in Prado's phone record, but the guy was a dealer and it looks like almost all of his friends were just clients. Incident report. 20th... 20th of June, 2015. That's the explosion. The hostage situation. Road traffic collision. On Monday the 20th of June at 4.26 a.m., the Biddle police received a call reporting a car accident in the area near the Pike Hill turning on Route 10. Upon arrival, we located one vehicle in the nearby woods. Actions taken. The car hit the tree and was burning when we arrived at the scene, so we used an extinguisher and quickly managed to put the fire out. Preliminary investigation revealed that the accident was most likely caused by excessive speeding. There were no passengers inside. Further investigation revealed a bloody trace in the woods, but no body was found in the area nearby. The driver may still be alive. His current status remains unknown. Hmm. I wonder if that was me, like, rushing to the hostage situation or something? Another incident report. Same date. Possible homicide in an abandoned warehouse. Okay, so this would be the explosion. Just before 2 p.m. we received a call reporting the discovery of a man's body in the empty warehouse near Route 10. Officers sent to the scene confirmed one victim whose death was caused by a gunshot wound to the head. There were no documents on the body when found. Forensics will be required to provide a positive ID. The autopsy is scheduled for Friday. One victim whose death was caused by a, a gunshot wound to the head. 
Remember that, um, the x-ray we saw of a bullet in someone's head? I suspect that's me. The officers recovered shell casings on the scene matching one weapon, a pistol with a silencer, also found on the scene, lying approximately 10 feet from the victim's body. The weapon was identified as a self-loading pistol produced by ADS. Body found in warehouse. The body of a 40-year-old man, yeah that sounds like me, was found in an abandoned warehouse near Route 10 on Monday. Edwin Hughes said, it appears that the victim was shot from close range, but we don't yet know how long the body was there before we found it. Autopsy is scheduled on Friday, but it's quite possible that we may have a murder case on our hands. Listen, I think someone's been murdered here in the warehouse. You should send someone. It, I'm half a mile down the road from the Pike Hill turning off Park Street. I was out on a run, and I stopped here for a minute. I'm looking at him right now. He's lying face down. No, he's definitely dead. There's a lot of blood. Yeah, it's Jacob. Jacob Singer. Look, can you please just send someone? Thanks. I do remember this place. Interesting. Please, just tell me why this is important. An unidentified man died at a nearby abandoned warehouse not long before you tried to save the girl. He was shot at point blank range. And we're going back to that warehouse. That's correct, yes. The police wrote the whole thing off as a drug deal gone wrong. But that's not what you believe. I believe everything in life is connected, Mr. Black. The only question is how. Let's find, find out, out, shall we? New text. Black, where are you? You've promised to help me. Yep, 20th of June. At, uh, 3 p.m. Well, I think I'll end this episode here since we're at the start of a new section. So I hope you've enjoyed so far, and when I return, we're going to look at what happened at the warehouse with a supposed drug deal gone wrong.